Shalom. Ya, how are you? Lama tidak pergi sini. It's been, I don't know, three years more since ninth floor. Um, bear with me, okay? Be patient with me. Actually, yeah, because of this uh, flowing thing, preaching. So I feel nervous today because you people, you know the word of God better than me. So if I'm not up to your standard, please forgive me. I know not what I'm doing. But everything I do, I do for you. Amen? Yeah, because... Yeah, especially my grandma. La. <laughs> but please forgive me first. Because... Um, One time the disciple asked Jesus, how many times do we have to forgive? Is it up to seven times? Jesus answered, not up to seven, but up to seven times 77. Berapa? I never counted. Seven times 77? Mathematician, Gloria? Berapa? It means forgive, keep on forgiving. Amen? Because sometimes, if you ever wondered what holding you from receiving from God, from enjoying the fruit of the Spirit, like Elder mentioned last week, everybody wants us to have the fruit of the Spirit. But have you ever wondered what restricts us from having that fruit of the Spirit, of having peace, if, uh, that we enjoy the freedom that God has? given us the joy, the love that God says he offer each and every one of us. Some say it's lack of faith. Some say lack of prayer or fasting or your will. But I think what holding us back is that It is of forgiveness. Because, or lack of forgiveness. Because this is the command, this is written in the Bible, right in Matthew said, for if you forgive other people, the people that go against you, you know, sometimes even good people when come close to us also can be mean to us also. Sometimes they're in bad mood, especially ladies, sometimes they datang bulan also, sometimes bad mood. So it's not really them. But sometimes you, we take it personal. right? People don't greet us. People don't greet us. Hi, elder. Then sometimes we feel bad. But we are instructed to give, to forgive. The Bible says, forgive other people so that God will forgive you. Matthew says, if you forgive other people when they sin against you, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. But if you do not forgive others their sins, your Father will not forgive you either. So it's our part to forgive, right? If we don't forgive, God don't forgive us. But sometimes we can say, yes, I can forgive, but I cannot forget. Yes, God says, the Bible says, forgive and God will forgive. Like Pastor Prince said, God, the Bible did not say, forget and God will forget you. Amen? So we forgive. Even Jesus also, from Mark 11, that, uh, our favorite chapter, that when you ask anything in my name, it shall be given to you. But after that, when you stand standing, forgive your brothers and sisters. Amen? If you hold in anyone, forgive them, so that your Father in heaven may forgive you, your sin. All these three verses, the word tell us to forgive so that God will forgive us. Um, in uh, Luke Gospel, you probably remember the story. There's four friends bring a paralyzed man to see Jesus, carrying him on a stretcher. But they can't get into the, the house where Jesus is teaching. 
So what did they do? They go up to the flat roof of the house, and this is where the uh, children love it. They go up to the roof, they take brick by brick, they make hole there in the roof so that they can let their friend down the rope. Jesus is standing there, down there, preaching, and down comes this man in front of him. In Sunday school, <laughs> the point of the story is, it's nice that you help your friend. Amen? Especially to help them find Jesus. It's good work. You, have, you must do uh, good work. You are like uh, Elder Paul said just now, if you want to please God, you must do good. You must help your friend, especially so that they can find Jesus, so that they know Jesus. But Jesus, but in this story, Jesus said to a paralyzed man, is that, friend, your sins are forgiven. I don't think this means that Jesus thought the sin caused the paralysis. But what this means is that the man needed to be whole, to be healed. Because before Jesus can heal anybody in the gospel, he always mentioned that your sin has been forgiven. Because when you have sin, you cannot come to God. So that's why Jesus, before he healed, before he blessed uh, someone, he's always said that your sins have been forgiven. And then if in the gospel, he says, you have to forgive so that God will forgive you. That means everything... Uh, let me say this word. Some Christians say that you have to do good so that God will be good to you. right? If you do bad, you get bad. Even the other religion also, like the famous word from Confucius, they say, do good. Do not, uh, the, the golden rule, you know the golden rule, golden rule of life, is that do not do to others what you would do to you. Even Buddha, the famous Maxim, said, Do not do to others. Do not do to others what you would not want others to do to you. Every religion, semua religion, ada this word. Do not do to others what you want others to do to you. The golden rule here is this. This is the entire... Uh, Jewish law, the Torah. It, what is helpful to you, do not do to your neighbor. Right? But the difference between Confucius and other religion and with Jesus is this Jesus' word is a command positive, positive command, while the others is negative. The others say, do not do. Do not do to others. But Jesus said, do to others. Instruction, the command. That's why, forgive, do, do forgive. That you don't get it? Okay, it's very dry. <laughs> oh God, help me! <laughs> All right, Hallelujah, Hallelujah, Hallelujah. Forgive, forgive, because uh, after the cross, I, I, I mean. If you forgive, God will forgive forgive you. That is before the cross, before the blood of Jesus, before the sacrifice. So after the cross, is there something changed after the cross? Because Jesus died for all our sin. That means you are forgiven. The blood forgives you. Amen? A lot has happened through the, the cross. The law was fulfilled. All the law of Moses that you have, you must do good, do this, the sacrifice, do this, has been fulfilled at the cross. And forgiveness was provided at the cross. The blood of Jesus changed anything. The blood of Jesus makes us different from other religions. Amen? Because uh, it's not only the forgiveness for our sin. It's much more, much more than that. Jesus, Jesus died for, for us. Amen? And if Jesus died for us, the Bible said we also died with Jesus. During our baptism, during our uh, inversion, that we died with Jesus. They mean we have to die first. You have to know that you have to die before you can born again. Amen? You have to die first. Because 
after after you've been died, after you died with Jesus, and when <laughs> when you are raised from the water during baptism, you rise up with Jesus. You are resurrected with Him to a new life. That is where your spirit is born again. When you confess Jesus as your Lord, and you believe that He's died and God has raised Him from the dead, and that that uh, He's seated at uh, Father's right hand in heaven. That is where your spirit was born again. It is your spirit that was born again. And when your spirit is born again, you will become a new creation. The, church said it, the Bible said that you are a new creation. All things have become new because of your belief. Now, now after our, our belief, after we were born again, we receive the Holy Spirit that has been freely given to us by God. Holy Spirit has been freely given to us. Some, yes, there's a teaching says that says that not all believers have the Holy Spirit. And this, uh, I have a, a lot of argument in the church. Because if you believe in Jesus, you must have the Holy Spirit. But if you are some believers, I don't think all believers have the Holy Spirit. Because you have to, yeah, you have to believe, you have to lay hand or baptism. Because I know some leaders that have been a uh, uh, just leaders. I met one after they went back from came, came back from Israel. He said he never had been baptized his entire life because he went until he he go to Israel to be baptized at Jordan River, original baptism. So all this while, just just leaders, a Christian, but never have a baptism. <laughs> and I ask, I want to ask you. Ada Holy Spirit ke tidak? And yet, the, and also the, the, the church is so don't believe in the Pentecost thing. So, no wonder the Bible says, if you ask, you know, uh, you ask the Holy Spirit from the Father, He will give it to you. Amen? Because you have to be born again. You have to die first before you can be born again to receive the Holy Spirit. So, the forgiveness has been freely given to us. Jesus paid it all. Amen? Now, in the new covenant, because of the blood, all we have to do is to believe. All we have to do is to renew our mind. The Bible said that be renewed in the spirit of your mind. Be transformed by the renewing of your spirit, Romans 12. So, because of the blood, the forgiveness has been given to us. So, the only command now is, because of the cross, because of the blood. Ephesians 4, 23 said, Be kind to each other, tender-hearted, forgiving one another, just as God through Christ has forgiven you. Colossians 3, 13 said, Forgive anyone who offends you. Remember, the Lord forgave you. So you must forgive others. As Christ forgives you, church, you also must do. Amen? Because that is, his name in Matthew first uh, Matthew one chapter twenty one when the Holy Spirit uh, visit Zechariah uh, visit uh, Joseph and Mary he said your your wife will bring forth a son and you shall call his name Jesus because he will save his people from their sins the name of Jesus alone save so now. We can enjoy our freedom, our peace, and joy, and all the fruit of the Spirit because we have been forgiven. The cross changed everything. Your sin and your lawless deed, God will remember no more. Now, because you are forgiven, your mind, your soul, has been set free. There's no more, should I forgive these people? Should I have to forgive these people? Now your mind set free. So because you are forgiven, you are free. Whom the Son set free, you are free indeed. And now we can say that, praise the Lord, O my soul. Psalm 103. We like that verse. Right? And forget, forget not all his benefit who forgive us all our sins. The blood, Jesus has forgive us all our sins, heals our, our, our diseases. The blood, the cross change everything. Jesus has redeemed us from your life. 
has redeemed your life from destruction and crowned you with loving kindness and tender mercy. The blood satisfies your desire with good thing, so that you, your youth is renewed like the eagle. Because you are forgiven, church, you are free from, from the law of sin and death. From all the law that says in the Old Testament, you are far, far from oppression. I bless you. And you will not live in fear. You are born of God already. And the evil one does not touch you. You have peace with God that surpasses all understanding. You have the mind of Christ. I just proclaim to you. I'm not preaching. I just proclaim to you that because you are forgiven, you are alive. You are a child of God, my friend. You are the chosen one. That's why God forgives you. You are his holy people. Without blame before God. You have received abundance of grace and the gift of righteousness. And I say this, you can reign in your life. Because you are forgiven, you are victorious. You are standing on higher ground. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Now you can say that I'm forgiven. Is there any unforgiveness or offense in your heart right now? I think now is the time that we let it go. Yeah, I know. Not all of, you, of us have, a, have it all. We all have grudge in our heart. Even now, we, we also have people in our mind that have hurt us. Then we say we forgive, forgive, but we cannot forget it. We cannot forget the event. We cannot forget the word that have been talked to us. Because our mind cannot forgive. Our, our mind keep on remembering it. Our, our mind keep on replaying it. Keep on playing it. But as the blood forgive you, forgive others. Because sometimes when we hold into the hurt, hoping one day the person that hurt us will, will come to a realization of what they did. But sometimes this happens. Sometimes this happens, it's good. But sometimes it doesn't. They're just happy, go lucky out there. They said something bad to you and they are happy that you are the one who hurt. So let it go. What we don't want to do, just that we don't want the hurt to keep on kachow us. Day and night, keep on remembering this thing. Just remember the cross. Just look to the cross. God forgive you, so forgive them. Do to them what you want others to do unto you. Amen? You are forgiven. Now we know that God has forgiven us. What do we do? Should we love God? Should, should we love Him more? Amen? When asked by the Pharisees, what is the greatest commandment? Jesus answered, the greatest commandment is love God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, with all your strength. Can we do that? Preachers have used this to, to, to ask us to love God more and to try harder to please Him. Spend more time with Him, more praying, more praying, more fasting. Get rid of the idol in our heart. But there's many problems with this line of preaching. Not least of which is the greatest commandment don't even apply to believers. Do you know that the Ten Commandments is not for the believers? It is for the Jews, not for Christians. But I heard Christians love the Ten Commandments. They even hang it on the wall of the house. The Ten Commandments is not for you. Because love, Jesus, His love for us has fulfilled all the commandments. The Bible asks us to all know one except to love one another. 
for he who loves another has fulfilled the law. You love one another, you fulfill the Ten Commandments. If you know that you're forgiven, you love one another. Because the commandment they say, you shall not murder, you shall not steal, and all these things, the Ten Commandments, and all the 613 commandments, sum up saying, you shall love your neighbor as yourself. Because love never harm. Love don't harm your neighbor. Never. You have to love God with all your mind, with all your strength. But did the cross change anything? Did the blood of Jesus change anything? Jesus did not throw away the law. He just fulfilled the law. The Bible said that God nailed the law to the cross. So if you are in Jesus, you are in Christ, if you abide in him, the law has no effect on you. All you have to do is love one another. The new commandment, Jesus said, this is the new commandment, that you love one another. Just like this. Jesus stand here, talk to his disciple. This is my commandment. Love one another. Love the people. Love the people. And all religion say the same thing. You love them. You love other people. But John, the disciple whom Jesus loved, John said, in First John, he said, believe in Jesus and love one another. You have to believe in Jesus first before you can love one another. Because other religions said love one another and they kill them, they bomb them. Because why? Love have to go, have to via the cross. Love had to go through Jesus. And that's why John said, believe in Jesus and love one another. But sometimes the, the church said, love one another. This is Jesus' command. This is Jesus' word. Love one another, love one another. As I said just now, as a Pastor Prim always mentioned, un there is our unbelieving believers. Not all Christians believe in Jesus alone. I know a relative, it's a very big toke, Kaya. He's a Christian. His house, above the door, the, above the door, there's a Buddhist mirror there. <laughs> at the car, at the dashboard of the car, there's Golden Buddha sitting there, like our brother here. Inside the house, it's a cross. So, everything, they mix everything. They're Christian. They use the church just for wedding and for funeral. Daily life, they worship the statue, the Buddha. This, this is what Pastor Fling called the unbelieving believers. So, they cannot love one another. They grab people's land, they do corruption, they song up money everywhere because they did not go via the cross to love one another. They see people, boleh makan bah? The weak, uh, just ambil semua. <laughs> they are weak already bah? So, might as well grab all their, their land, their thing, because they did not go to the cross. They did not go via the cross. That's why without the cross, you cannot love one another. And we are not Jesus. Because sometimes we just say, love one another. We are not Jesus. But John said, believe in Jesus. Then love one another. Then you can love God. Amen? Because the law was fulfilled through love. And I love what God said to Isaiah. In chapter 46, God said, I love you. As I said just now, I'm not preaching, I'm not teaching, I just proclaim God's word to you today. God said, I love you, church. I love each and every one of you. I will be your God throughout your life. That is his promise to you today. Until your hair is white with age, I met you and I will care for you. I will carry you along and save you. Fear not, 
for I have redeemed you. I have called you by name. You are mine. Church, God is our Father. He loves us so much. We are His children. In this world, we are like Jesus. Believe it. Because in love, as Jesus is, so are we. And the Bible tells us, this is the real love. Not that we love God, but that He loves us. Now, this is our confession now. Because God loved me, surely, the word surely, surely He shall deliver us from the snare of the fowler and from the perilous pestilence. Surely He shall cover us with His feathers and under His wing we shall take refuge. Nothing can harm us. No weapon that is formed against us shall prosper. What is the conference this week? It's coming week. A uh, museum there? Shamanism. There's a shamanism conference going to happen next week. Sarawak Museum. All the shaman, all the people who have the, this pengaruh thing come to Sarawak throughout the world. All around the world, they come here. We have conference. And I've said this for more than 10 years already, even to our leaders here. While we concentrate on church revival, we always say revival, revival, revival is coming. Revival like Bakalalan, revival like Bakalalan. we want it again. Padungan, all these things. And I always mention, don't forget those unbelieving believers. They will do it to fight you. The shamanism, the kati banyibut tu. Kalau orang nak pengaruh, orang nak belia, orang nak dukun, this thing coming back. They they wear all this thing like the kati banyibutnya, baju buruhnya. Ah, they do the procession. Procession, it is coming back. Let's we don't forget about them. While we're chasing this, this thing here, don't forget about this thing. This thing happened here. While you seek the good thing, this thing happened. Who try to, to rob us, who try to stop us, try to stop the gospel from growing. And these people are backed by the government. They have a conference. Our revival never been back. They never give us the budget to do it. But these people easily, senang senang, they have revival. Why? I think because our light is too bright that they want to to padam it. And I think I'm here to, I'm here to say to you that because you are love, surely blessing will come to you. Surely you will win. If God is for us, who can be against us? Amen? If we keep his word, Jesus said, if, if you abide in me, you can have what you, you ask. I will give you the desire of your heart. And we can, if you agree with me, this conference can be postponed. Amen? Or can be lansung tak, tak jadi. If we believe. If we believe that God loves us so much. God loves us more than God loves them. Surely, he beg us. Because the word surely in the Bible have been written so many times. I think four or five times. Surely he will bless us. Surely he will multiply, multiply us. Surely he took our pain, bore our suffering. Surely, surely no weapon that form against, against us shall prosper. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow you all the days of your life. God love you. Grace is with you every day of your life. Surely you will win. Surely you're standing on higher ground. Surely, this word meditate, surely God is for me. And if God is for me, who can be against me? He who spared not his own son, but deliver him up for me, how shall he not give us all things that we ask? Amen? Amen. So, because he loves us, he loves me, I am sanctified. I am holy. I am the chosen one. 
I am forgiven because God loves me. I'm a new creation. I am favored. I'm protected. I'm healthy. The cancer has died. Amen? I'm prosperous. I'm greatly blessed. That is our confession. Because God loves me, I am the head, not the tail. I am above, not below. First, not last. Land, not borrow. He enlarged my territory. He enlarged my influence. I not only get the, that job, God gave me job of influence to give position to others, to pay others, not to be paid by others, but to pay others. Amen? He supplies all my needs. He supplies all your needs. What is your need today? You need money? You need house? You need a car? You need peace? You need shalom? He shall supply it for, to you. You shall not be in one. You are more than conqueror through him who loves you. You are the light of the world. You are greatly blessed. Because God loved me, I receive abundance of grace and the gift of righteousness. And I will reign in life through the one, Jesus Christ. I have received the gift of the Holy Spirit. And because God loved me, I can say yes to all his promises. I shout amen to God for his glory. I take all his blessing. I lampano all. Lampano is I grab all his blessing. He just hold it <laughs> before he give you. He just grab it already. Cannot wait. Amen? Receive grace. We all receive grace upon grace. Blessing upon blessing. Favor upon favor. Five times more than your, your other brothers. Amen? We can do all things to Christ who strengthen us. We are redeemed from the curse of the law. Amen? And when I drink deadly poison, this is for you. When you drink deadly poison, it won't harm you. Pengaruh anda nga sayi bagi tak mati. I'm saved by grace. I'm greatly blessed. Yes, Christ lived with me. And I live by faith in him and in his love for me. Church, you are all forgiven. God love you. There's one time in the Bible, Jesus said, I tell you, he talked to Simon the Pharisee and also to you, BM Grace. Jesus said, I tell you, her sins, and there are many, have all been forgiven. So she loved me much. But a person who is forgiven little, show little love. The more you know you are forgiven, the more you love your neighbor. If you know that you're forgiven little, you give love little. If you know that you're forgiven much, you give much love. For God so love you that he gave you his only begotten son. They should not perish, but have eternal life. Eternal life is not life in heaven. It's, it's a life now. Jesus said, this is eternal life. This is the meaning of eternal life. That you know God loves you. And that you know Jesus has forgiven you. John 14 says, John, John 17, Jesus said, this is eternal life. That you may know the true God and Jesus Christ whom he said. And God loves you and Jesus forgiven you. Amen? And I pray that God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give to you, BM Grace, the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him. The eyes of your understanding being enlightened, that you may know the wide, that you may know the long, that you may know the height, that you may know the deep, the love of God for you. Amen? the long, the wide, the height, the deep. Love, God's love for you. You want another sign of the cross for you? Psalm 103. For as high as the heaven and the, are above the earth, so great is his love for you, church. As far as the, is the east from the west, so far he has removed your sin. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You are forgiven. You are loved. Now let it be known to you 
brothers and sisters, that through this man, Jesus Christ, because of his shed blood, is preached to you the forgiveness of sins. Everyone who believes in him is made right with God. They mean justified from all things. Something that the law of Moses cannot do. Church, you are blessed. You are loved. You are forgiven. God bless you all. God bless being grace. Shalom. Thank you.